Okay, welcome back to Mr. Hassan's math channel. In, in this video, I'm going to be going through a question from the P3 International A-Level textbook. And this is from chapter two, functions and graphs. It's question number 11 from, I think it's um, exercise, hold on, let me find out. Okay, there we have it, exercise 2C from question, uh, question number 11 from exercise 2C from the P3 um, International A-Level textbook and this is a question here which is about functions and graphs so let's get on with it it says first of all it says the function g has domain minus 5 to 14 inclusive minus 5 to 14 and is linear from minus 5 minus 8 to 0 12 and then from 0 12 to 14 15 so basically uh, it's like a piecewise function it has one rule before between minus 5 and, and, and 0 basically Okay, in the x-axis and between 0 and 14 from that domain it follows a different rule. Okay, so it's like a linear but a different um, This is like a positive large gradient. This is a negative kind of shallower gradient Okay, so a sketch of the graph of y equals g of x is shown in the diagram So basically there's some points here which are not mentioned For example here, this is 14 and 5 it says Yeah, so that's 14 and 5. So we know that the y coordinate at this point is 5 this is minus 5 and minus 8, that's right, 0, 12, because that, that's what's missing. There is it's 5 up to there. Okay, um, then it says, uh, write down the range of g. Now, the range of the function is all the values it can take on the y-axis. So, the range of g is going to be all the way from minus 8 up to 12. That's the range. Okay, the range, uh, all the output values. So, you know, the input values are from minus 5 up to 14, and all the output values, the lowest that they go is minus 8, and the highest that go is 12. This function does not exist past these two points. Okay, so, you know, if this function could exist, this might have continued on. This might have continue, continued on, but this function has a domain which is limited from minus 5 to 14, so its range is limited to minus 8 to 12. So we can say the range, okay, is going to be, you can say g of x is between... Um, the lower value of minus 8 okay this is part a up to the higher value of 12 you could also put here y instead of g of x same thing okay then it says for part b it says find g g 0 so that means you've got to put 0 into the function g so how do you put 0 into the function g well you put 0 into function g by putting if you have g g 0 what it means is replace the x because normally the function is g of x so it's saying replace the x with zero so it basically means put x equals zero into the function and see what y is now if you put x equals zero into the function what comes out is 12 okay so g zero is equal to 12 okay so for part b we can say that g zero is equal to 12 so we got to find g of 12 okay g of 12 which is equal to so we've got to find what happens when you put 12 into the function, when you put x equals 12. So you've got to find the value of y when x equals 12. So that we need to do that. Now there's numerous ways of doing this. Um, there's numerous ways of finding this. Okay, finding what y is when x is 12, basically. So we need to find that value over there. So one way we could do it is by using what are called similar triangles. I could make a pair of triangles which are similar, like... I don't think this will work. Let's see if this changes shape. Yes, it does. Good. All right, good. That works. So you got here this triangle, which is the triangle made by, whoops, the triangle made by 5 to 12 and from 0 to 14. So there's that triangle here. That's the triangle made. This is from 5 to 12, and that's from 0 to 14. So that's 14, and that's 7. And then you have this small triangle, which is over here. Let's see if this will work. Okay, you can move around a bit now. Let's see. Yeah, we've got this small triangle here. Okay, which is a similar triangle to the, to the other one. So this is, from, this is from 0 to 12, so that's 12 here. And we need to find what this height is here. Okay, what this height is here. Once we found this height here, let me call it x okay if i find that height here then i can work out what this length is it's going to be that length less than 12 and that will be the value of y 
when x equals 12. So I can use similarity here. I can say x over 7 is equal to 12 over 14. Okay? The ratio of the corresponding size is the same. So x is going to be uh, 7 times 12 over 14. 7 and 14 cancel leave you 2. That's going to be 6. So this length is 6 between 12 and this point. So that must be 12 minus 6, which is 6. Okay, because 6 plus 6 is 12 there. So that must be 6. So G12 is equal to 6 by similarity. Okay, I hope that was clear for you. It's just using similar triangles. I looked at the big triangle, which is this one over here. This is that big triangle from 5 to 12 and from 0 to 14. That's where I got those lengths from. And then I looked at the small triangle, which is the triangle which starts from where y equals to the x equals 12 over here and it goes back to the axis and this length we had to find that length x which we worked out is 6 because x over 7 equals 12 over 14 so g12 is equal to that 6 below 12 therefore 6 12 minus 6 is 6 so that's going to be g12 so that's the answer to part b and then part c says the function h is defined by h of x is equal to h is such that x maps to same thing as saying hx equals 2x minus 5 over 10 minus x you have to find g h7 so first thing is you've got to find what h7 is now h7 is when you re replace 7 inside the function h so it's 2 times 7 minus 5 over 10 minus 7 that's going to give you 14 minus 5 which is 9 over 10 minus 7 which is 3 so we know that h7 is equal to 3. Okay, now you know h7 is equal to 3. Okay, um, h7 is equal to 3. We can now, that means you've got to put inside the function g the value of 3. That means you've got to put x equals 3 into this function. Okay, so you've got to find what y is when x equals 3. Okay, so you need to find what that value of y is when x equals 3. Okay, so now again we could use the same kind of principle. We can use similar triangles again. So let's just take this triangle from there and use it. Okay, so I know that this is the big triangle. This is the big triangle made when you have, you know, that. And I've, I think this diagram is slightly smaller, so let me just adjust the size of this triangle. Can I do it? Yes, I can. Okay, so you have here, whoops. Okay, you have your triangle here, the big one again. It goes from 5 to 12. Remember, this is 5 to 12, which is 7, and this is 14. And then you have your smaller triangle, okay, which is a smaller version of this. So I'll just copy and paste it. Now, this smaller triangle, it goes, it's a really small triangle, actually. It's like, oops, so small you can hardly see it. What happened there? Okay. It just goes like really small. I'll just draw it like that big so we can see something that's going on. It's a very small triangle, and we can see that um, this length here is 3. Okay, you'll find when x equals 3. And this height is what we have to find. Let's call it, you know, a different letter y. Okay, we need to find what this length y is, and that will be uh, that much less than 12. Okay, that will be the y value when it's less than 12. So what we can say is y is equal to... Um, so y over 7, sorry, is equal to 3 over 14. y over 7 is equal to 3 over 14. So y is equal to 7 times 3 over 14, which is 21 over 14. Uh, 7 goes into both of them. In fact, we can just say this is 3 over 2, 1.5. y is equal to 1.5, okay, because you've got 3 over 2 there. So that means we know that our, we can say that g3 is equal to 12 minus 1.5, which is going to be 10 5. So that's what G3 is. Okay, so I hope you understood how we did that. I don't think I said it out that well, but basically, you know, we're trying to find when this, um, we want to find when X is 3, what Y is. Okay, what G of X is. Okay, so we substituted 3 into this function by just using similarity. We could have done it in different ways. We could have found the equation of the curve of the line first, because we know this point is 14, 5. At this point is 0, 12. We could have found the gradient, and we could have worked out the equation of the line. It's not, not too difficult because the, the points are 0, 12, and 14, 5. So you could have said, okay, this is 12 minus 5, which is 7 over 14. It's going to be uh, negative 
Okay, 12 over 5 over 0 minus 14. So the gradient is minus a half. Okay, so we can say y is equal to minus a half x plus 12. And then we could have just put when x equals 3, you find what y is. When x equals 3, you're going to have minus 3 over 2 plus 12, which is 10.5. And even for the last question, when we had to put in x equals, um, what did you have to put in? x equals 12 in there. When you put x equals 12 in here, you're going to have y equals minus a half times 12 plus 12 which is 12 minus 6, which is 6. So we could have worked out the equation of the line even and done the same thing, okay? Instead of using similarity, there's different ways of doing this question. And I think that was it, and that was it, yeah. I hope that was clear. It wasn't very well laid out, but I hope that answered your question for the student who asked me how to answer it. Thank you for watching.